Hello and welcome to the Small School Districts Association Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us today. We're really excited that you're taking the time to learn about some great schools uh, that we have in this grouping today. I have a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. You can direct questions to a specific school or schools by including their name, or you can leave a question for all of our representatives to answer about their institutions. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. That's why that Q&A button is so important. This is just one of many different sessions that have taken place for students as part of the Small School Districts Association Virtual College Fair. We hope you've enjoyed others. As a reminder, this session, as well as all of those other sessions, um, have been recorded and they'll be available within about a week's time at that same website where you registered, strivescan.com slash SSDA. I'm excited to welcome our first school to present today, and that is Hawaii Pacific University. Aloha, everyone. Let me, oh, ah, let me share my screen, sorry. Should have had that ready to go. <laughs> That's okay, it's the Zoom life, we all know. I know, not like I haven't done this a million times before. Here it is. And present. Okay, everybody see it okay? Yes, looks great, Susie. Great. Aloha, everyone. My name is Susie Prenovo. I am an Associate Director of Admissions for Hawaii Pacific, and I am stepping in for my colleague, Alex, who normally color, covers California. I am in the Northwest in Seattle, so I cover the Northern states. Um, a little bit about Hawaii Pacific. We are a mid to small size private university right on the island of Oahu in downtown Honolulu. So urban campus, students from around the world, small classes will await you if you join us in Honolulu. I have a short little video clip and it shows some sites of campus, some classrooms, some of our students, and some facts and figures. So I'm gonna show that now. <laughs> picture yourself as one of our students at Hawaii Pacific. We have about 60% of our students are from out of state, from around the U.S. and the world. So that really uh, is very distinctive about our university, is just the cultural and ethnic diversity of our students. So you'll be surrounded with like-minded students, yet a lot of different perspectives in class and as roommates and just hanging out around the island as well. So for those of you, hopefully you visited Hawaii already. If not, we are on the island of Oahu, which is the, called the gathering place. 80% of the state population lives on our island. So we have, and I don't know if the, um, it's blocked or not, but we have our downtown main campus here in Honolulu, right on the waterfront, right downtown, very urban. 
We do have a shuttle that goes back and forth to our Hawaii Loa campus, which is a little more quieter setting. And then we have Oceanic Institute for Marine Biology, Oceanography, and Environmental students. But most of our students are right downtown. Our majors, we have over 45 different programs to study. You are direct entry into all of our majors. Um, for nursing, we do have a direct entry program. We also have um, kind of a two-step application process as well. Popular programs are our sciences, including our marine biology and oceanography. We have uh, the largest enrollment is in our business program and our nursing program. And a couple of new majors to point out, we have arts and markets, which takes uh, the student's passion in music, theater, or visual arts combined with some business classes. Engineering, we just uh, added our computer engineering. These are all direct entry new programs for us. It's also very easy to switch majors, add a double major or minor at HPU. For the classroom experience, we are planning on in-person for this coming fall. We transitioned to in-person this past spring as well. So currently our students are enjoying um, socially distanced classes. We do have some online op options and hybrid as well. But know that uh, coming in fall, you will be in person unless something goes sideways, but hopefully not. <laughs> We're all wanting to go back to normal. Uh, for admissions, we have our own application and the Common App. We do fee waivers if you'd like. Um, to not pay that $45. We're mainly looking at your high school transcript, uh, test optional. Costs, again, private universities, same tuition, regardless if you're in-state or out-of-state, but for California students, we do have a program, uh, we have scholarships as well, um, athletics and talent-based, but we have a California match. So what this is is guarantees that California high school students will not pay any more in tuition than they would if they were to stay to go to one of the UCs. All right, that's pretty much my six minutes. And uh, this is my information. Feel free to get in touch with me. Um, you can also uh, take a picture of the inquiry card. It takes you straight to fill out more information. Thank you. Awesome, Susie. Thank you so much for presenting on Hawaii Pacific today. Our next school, we're staying in Hawaii, we're going to be talking to Chaminade University. Here we go. All right. Aloha, everyone. Let me share my screen. All righty. I'm sure you can all see that. All right, here we are. So aloha everyone. Thank you so much for joining this morning. My name is Kimiko Strayer. I'm one of the newest admission counselors at Chaminade. Um, I mostly work with students coming from the mainland from states in the Midwest to East Coast, as well as California, where I'm also from. Hello, California people. And the Big Island and students from coming from Oahu as well. So our beautiful little university, we're located in the heart of Honolulu in a neighborhood called Kaimuki. We're actually 15 minutes from HPU. So if you're visiting HPU, come by and, and we'll um, be able to host you on our campus too. We are located about 20 minutes from Daniel Inouye International Airport and less than two miles away from the famous Waikiki Beach, which is a very famous touristy spot. Um, so you can take advantage of the city, the beaches, you've got the mountains, hiking, surfing, all kinds of stuff to do, really fun place to be, and it's easy to call home. In the neighborhood of Kaimuki, we're voted number one best food block. So if you're a foodie, this is the place for you. Um, we have a bunch of coffee shops, old school diners, antique, uh, antique shops, farmers markets, all kinds of stuff. And there's a saying here called keep it Kaimuki because it's definitely a unique little gem in Honolulu. So our uh, university faces Waialai Avenue and on the strip of Waialai are some of our favorites like Via Gelato, if you like gelato, Sprout, Coffee Talk. And I can't wait to discover um, for, you, for you to discover what yours is gonna be. This is kind of a snapshot of our home, Chaminade University of Honolulu. We are located on a 65 acre hillside called Kale Pohaku. We are home to just under 1100 undergraduate students, but we are getting applicants every day. Um, and so it is a smaller campus. We have students coming from 14 different countries, 40 different states and territories. So it's a very diverse campus and that's something we take pride in. Um, in fact, we're rated number five for most diverse university or private university. Um, and so like right as you step on campus, it's a very warm, welcoming, accepting community. People say hi to you even if they don't know you. Very like close-knit family. 
And as a small private liberal arts college, our students receive a personalized education that prepares them for an ever-changing future like we're seeing today. And with our average class size of 18 to 24, it's easy for students to get that one-on-one -on -one hands-on mentoring that they might be looking for. And with a 10 to one student to faculty ratio, our professors are gonna to get to know you, not just your name, but you know what you like, what you don't like, everything. And all of our professors are well-known, still very active in the field. So um, that makes for a better networking experience, internship opportunities that are accessible for our current students and alumni. Here's gonna be our majors. Some of our majors that are most unique to Chaminade are going to be forensic science and environmental and interior design, meaning that no other university um, on island offers those programs. Other majors that are popular to Chaminade are gonna be nursing, of course, criminology and the sciences. And then our newest programs are going to be community and public health, um, data science, analytics and visualization and environmental science. But no matter which major you choose, you're gonna get that hands-on experience. And as a Catholic Marianist and Native Hawaiian serving institution, we focus on promoting social justice and peace. And so no matter which major you choose, it's gonna come with a service learning component included. Um, and that's something you can write on your resume. So you're not only graduating with a degree, but you're also gonna have a bunch of experience with it as well. And what's great about all of our programs as they are direct entry, um, including nursing. So it's just one application and then you're in. And then, um, and they all come with a four-year graduation guarantee. And if you don't know what you wanna do yet, like I was, that's totally fine. You can come in as still deciding or you can change your majors um, pretty easily. So that's another benefit of a smaller school. Now for the fun stuff. So we have amazing programs and support inside the classroom, but I cannot encourage you enough to get involved outside the classroom because that's where college really happens. And so we have a lot of amazing faculty and support um, to help you there. So our Office of Student Activities and Leadership, they offer over 30 different clubs and organizations for, that you can participate in. These clubs range anywhere from cultural programs like um, Samoan, Korean, Filipino club, Hawaiian club, to academic programs that are more towards your major, like accounting, chemistry, biology, criminology. Um, and we also have an adventure club. So if you like surfing or you wanna learn scuba diving or zip lining, we've taken students to all those different activities. We have a surfing club also. Um, and all the costs are, are covered with your tuition. So that's really neat. We are NCA di um, Division II for athletics and our campus min ministry has numerous volunteer opportunities for students to participate in. And through our Office of Advising and Career Development, some students take advantage of study abroad, semester at sea, or study away, and you're still graduate in the four years. And through our four-year graduation guarantee, we're gonna promise that you graduate in four years. That's kind of our commitment to you. Um, you only have to do two things. One is to uh, make sure you pass your classes. And the second is to talk to your advisors. Um, and if for any reason that a course is not covered or offered during the time that you need it, then and you have to graduate later, then um, Chaminade is going to cover the extra cost after four years, which is really nice. Um, here are our residential halls. We have three of them. We have Hale Pohaku Kiefer Hall and Hale Lokalani. Kiefer Hall is a female resident only and then um, Hale Lokalani is a popular one. It's also for first year students like you guys would be. Um, and then the cost is gonna range from 11,000 to 19,000 just depending on the meal plan that you choose as well as if you're planning to do a single, a double or share with two other people. And then my second to the last slide is about our financial aid. So tuition is gonna range from 26 to 27,000 if you're non-nursing or 33,000 if you're nursing, a uh, nursing major but 97% of our students do receive some type of aid and 17,000 is the, the average that they receive. So you're not paying the whole price. And this is my last slide um, for admissions. So if you're non-nursing major, we just need a high school transcript, a 250 word essay describing who you are, why you're interested in Chaminade. And then for nursing, we need a 2.75, complete chemistry, biology and algebra two with a C or higher, and then a letter of recommendation. And this is the website to apply. And my very last slide, awesome. this is my information. So thank you very much. Thanks, Kimiko, so much for sharing all about Chaminade. All right, well, our next schools, we've heard from two great schools, a couple more to go. So we're next gonna be hearing from Anderson University. All right, everyone, from the Pacific to the Atlantic, uh, greetings from Anderson, South Carolina. Uh, my name is Joshua Pruitt, and I am an admissions counselor here at Anderson University for the College of Arts and Science, the College of Christian Studies, 
in the College of Engineering, and I get a few minutes this afternoon just to share with you uh, about Anderson University. Uh, we are a four-year liberal arts uh, private university, and we pride ourselves and we strive for um, success um, in four categories, Christ-focused, academically excellent, being hospitable, and purpose-driven. So everything we do um, comes from one of these four pillars. A few information or a little bit of, about us located in the upstate of Anderson, South Carolina. We're about two hours from Atlanta, two hours from Charlotte, so some major metropolitan areas, about 30 minutes south of Greenville, South Carolina, which is a a growing um, city uh, in the country as well, and about four hours from um, the uh, Atlantic coast and from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, a very popular tourist spot as well. We have about 3,800 students enrolled at Anderson University. That is uh, both uh, post-grad and undergrad. There's about 2,600 students uh, enrolled in undergraduate studies here at Anderson University. On the left side, you can see some of the uh, 10 different colleges that we house here at uh, Anderson. You have College of Health Professions, the College of Business, Arts and Sciences there being some of the more popular ones. We have 59 different majors to choose from. Um, so a lot of different ways to get plugged in and to study and, be, and to be successful uh, here at Anderson. And you will notice there are 18 to 1 student faculty ratio. Uh, we are very intentional. Uh, our students and our professors uh, create uh, great relationships and mentorships uh, to where our students can be successful. Uh, a little bit more specifically, our most popular major is the School of Nursing. Uh, we're considered one of the best uh, nursing programs in the Southeast with um, one of the, being one of the only universities to house a cadaver lab uh, on campus for freshmen to utilize a live birthing simulator and, and several operation uh, rooms that act as carryover for a local hospital. So everything's up to code. Uh, we have a 97% acceptance rate into nursing uh, or 97% uh, uh, acceptance rate for the NCLEX, 80% acceptance rates into dental, medical, pharmacy, physical therapy, and veterinary schools for postgrad students as well, um, with a 93% and acceptance right into med school. So uh, if you're considering medicine or nursing, Anderson University is definitely a great place to, to come and visit. Great Faith is one of our uh, pillars as well. Uh, here you'll notice uh, campus worship every Wednesday. It's where we get to take um, faculty and students get to take time uh, to come together co co congregationally to worship um, together. And it's just a, a really great time. And there's all different types of ways to, to get involved with different ministries on campus uh, where you can um, serve uh, community hours as well. Uh, from an academic standpoint, Anderson University has several different accolades that we've received um, throughout our tenure. Uh, we were founded in 1911 and we're one of the fastest growing universities uh, in the Southeast over the past few decades. Um, you can see here a best college by Apple Distinguished School uh, and best student engagement. And that's one that we pride ourselves on. So the Wall Street Journal last year um, uh, chose out of 4,600 universities in our country, uh, chose eight, 800 and provided a, a poll for students to take. And so based solely on the poll that students took and uh, essentially they were asked how they were engaged in the classroom and how the faculty and staff engaged them, you know, not only in the classroom, but also um, how they uh, prepared them to be successful in, in their postgraduate careers. And Anderson University was chosen uh, number 26 in the country. And so uh, our students love AU. We love our students and uh, we definitely want them to be successful. Uh, as I mentioned, we are an Apple Distinguished School. There are fewer than 32 Apple Distinguished Schools in the entire country. Uh, we have received this distinguishment over the past um, three years, or 2014, 2016, 2018. Uh, and all uh, incoming freshmen receive the latest iPad and Apple Pencil to utilize during their time uh, throughout, their, uh, throughout their tenure here at Anderson University. Uh, one of the other pillars is just being hospitable. Uh, we want to be considered your home away from home. Uh, and one of the, the best ways to do that is just through traditions. And um, one of those is listed below with 7,000 cookies. If you follow us on Instagram, you'll see how uh, we love to see um, or love to give our students cookies. This is where our first lady um, provides cookies to, their, uh, to our students here. Uh, you'll see here just a picture of campus, uh, the Sacred Six. Uh, students love the lawn. Uh, they get to come and play Frisbee and just hang out and just creates a very uh, unique and genuine home-like atmosphere. Here you'll see some of the athletics that we house on campus. 
um, from cheerleading to lacrosse um, to women's volleyball. Our women's volleyball, uh, unfortunately, just lost. Um, they, well, they received runner up in the South Atlantic Conference championship game. Um, so it was a really good uh, volleyball game. And then we have football coming in 2024. So we're very excited about the athletic um, uh, programs here at Anderson University. Uh, as I close my time uh, with y'all today, here are some of our social media links uh, where you can get to, uh, to connect with us. Definitely check us out at andersonuniversity.edu. And we'd love to have you on campus to, uh, to set up in a visit and come uh, check us out. Thank you. Great, Josh. Thank you so much for presenting on Anderson today. Well, we're going to be staying in uh, South Carolina again, staying on the Atlantic coast of the uh, United States, and we'll be hearing next from Erskine College. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Hunter Sells. I'm uh, one of the admissions counselors at uh, Erskine College. Um, Jennifer mentioned Erskine being uh, close to Anderson. We're just about 20, 25 minutes from uh, AU, and we're about an hour from uh, Greenville. So we're in that northwestern part of South Carolina. Um, Erskine is a small uh, Christian liberal arts college. So that essentially means that when you come to a college like Erskine, you're going to take a little bit of everything in your first two years. So a student would get to Erskine. They would um, maybe have a biology class, a history class, an English class, a math class. The goal there is for them to be well versed in the variety of disciplines. And then their junior and senior years where they focus more on their major. Um, another thing about Erskine is just the uh, class sizes. So the largest class a student would have at Erskine would be you know, maybe at max 25 students. And that would be in those first two years where they complete their core curriculum. Once they get into their major, however, they would have around 10 to 15 students per class. So the classes are uh, small. Uh, you definitely won't have any of those classes where there's you know, 100 to 150 people in a big auditorium. The classes are small and um, all the classes are taught by professors. So it is very much a um, kind of relational campus where you really get to know your professors. And uh, when it's for your major, you'll often have the same professor um, a few times. So the campus is very uh, close knit. Uh, moving on to our majors. So I mentioned that we are a liberal arts college. And so we offer uh, the variety of arts and sciences as well as some other majors. Um, so some of our most popular majors would be biology, uh, psychology, education, and uh, business administration, as well as the sports management. Um, some of the things that help our program stand out, uh, especially for psychology and biology, is that they're very hands-on programs. So students get the opportunity uh, to present papers at conferences, or get to conduct experiments in class, and a lot of students go on to do graduate work um, in biology and psychology. But I know every year we also have uh, students go on to do graduate work in um, some of the humanities as well, like uh, history and um, English. Uh, and then also we offer um, pre-professional programs and uh, dual degree programs. And so we offer a pre-dental, pre-law, a pre-med, pre-farm and pre-vet program. And then we also offer um, a couple of dual degree programs. So I mentioned how we um, are you know, roughly an hour for, away from Greenville. We're about an hour away from uh, Clemson University and we actually offer a, a dual degree program in engineering with Clemson. So a student would come to Erskine, they would complete their uh, core curriculum as well as some advanced math courses. And then they would uh, transfer over to uh, Clemson where they would complete uh, their engineering uh, discipline. And then when they graduate, they would have a bachelor's of arts in mathematics from Erskine and a bachelor's of science from uh, Clemson. And then lastly, we have a, a bridge program with our seminary. So Erskine also has a seminary that's uh, right here in Due West. And uh, for our bridge program, uh, students would complete their Bible and religion major in three years, and then transfer over to the seminary for two years to complete a master's of divinity. So they would get two degrees, a bachelor's, and then a master's of divinity in a total of five years. That degree typically takes, if a student wanted to do a bachelor's uh, and then an MDiv, that would usually take about seven years, uh, four years for an undergrad, and then three years full-time for an MDiv. But this way it actually saves students two years. So for students who are interested maybe in, um, in either you know, going into some kind of ministry or perhaps teaching uh, religion classes, uh, this would be a good route for them. Um, I mentioned our campus uh, being small and uh, close-knit. Uh, the campus is incredibly relational. Uh, we have right around 820 students who attend campus. Um, 
And so the, the you know, classes are very small, as I mentioned, uh, the campus is very spread out, but it's also at the same time, very uh, walkable. And then uh, one thing I'll uh, just add in on, uh, a big part of campus life is our, uh, is the fact that the majority of students do live on campus. And so here are the list of our dorms that we offer. Right around 95% of our students who attend can live on campus. And so because of that, we want this to be, you know, just more than a college or maybe you're a dorm more than a dorm, but kind of a place where you can really build that sense of community. But as my uh, time closes, I appreciate y'all um, listening to my presentation and I hope I uh, best of luck to y'all in your uh, college search. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Hunter, for presenting on Erskine today. All right, well, we still, we have a few minutes and I want to um, still have some time together today, even though we're concluding the formal part of the six minute presentations. Um, I wanna give our attendees a chance to get contact information out of the chat for all of our representatives to get contact information and links that they wanna share into the chat and for everyone to think if there are any questions. In that q and it can be about majors, um, extracurricular programming, study abroad, whatever. So if there's a question that can help personalize this and that you're just really wondering about, about one of these schools or all of these schools, please think about putting that in the Q&A. Uh, while we're doing that, I am going to um, invite each uh, school to have one representative come back on camera. We're gonna answer a little bit of Q&A live um, to uh, share a little bit more information. So the first question, um, oh, and we're gonna go in the same order that you presented. As the person ahead of you finishes, just feel free to turn your microphone on and answer the question and then we'll flow from person to person. Um, so we'll be starting, thank you, Susie at Hawaii Pacific. Um, the first question is to talk about a favorite event, campus tradition, some sort of program that's just really um, important and, and loved by your students um, and your whole campus community to give us a little more insight into that side of campus life. So Susie, take it away. Hi. Yeah, we have a Hawaii Spotlight series. So this happens the first year of the students when either, when, if, ah, I can't talk, whether they're a transfer or a new freshman. And really what it is, is to get our students to understand and, um, you know, really get to know the island of Oahu and the culture of Hawaii. So for example, we'll go out and do some service, pulling weeds and learning about the culture at an ancient taro patch, um, or perhaps go out for beach cleanup, um, go to historical sites on the island. So the students are really learning about their new home in Hawaii. Yeah, so I've actually only been here for three months. <laughs> so all the fun stuff is still going to come a little bit later. Um, but one thing I'm most looking forward to is our extravaganza. And so it's our event um, where we honor all kinds of different um, like cultural clubs, I guess. So we'll have like Samoan club do a dance, Hawaiian club do a dance, and there's a bunch of food. And it's just a really beautiful night celebrating diversity that we have on campus. So that's what I'm most looking forward to. And I hear about a lot. So I would say probably my favorite tradition that we have on campus is called Welcome Week. Uh, it uh, occurs the same week that freshmen move in. So freshmen move in and then about a week or so before classes start, it's called Welcome Week. And about every night we have a different themed night. Um, so we have like a Western night where everyone comes and we do like line dancing and we serve different types of like Western food, barbecue, stuff like that. And then there's like fireworks one night, there's a carnival night. So it's just a lot of fun uh, where freshmen get to like experience kind of college. It feels like summer camp at first and then like classes kick in and then it gets a little like, oh, OK, this is what college is like. Um, but that's definitely my favorite um, event and tradition that we have on campus uh, It's called Welcome Week. So um, probably my favorite tradition at Erskine is actually our uh, presidential scholarship competition. It's actually a competition we offer uh, every year for uh, early um, for students who are early admins, we select a group of them and they get to come on a campus. And they do uh, different team building activities. Uh, they get to meet each other and um, they get to meet different professors. They get to sit in on a mock class. So they kind of get to experience college for a day. And then afterwards, we typically will do something uh, fun. Like um, I know last year they uh, went bowling and got pizza. And so they get to do a kind of fun activity to maybe help relieve some of the stress of having to do the, the scholarship competition. But um, I think it's a really cool event to see students are really excited about college to kind of get them on campus so they can have a first taste of it before they go off to college for real. 
but yeah. I love um, I love getting to hear about a little bit about each of these. I hope everyone who's list, watching live or watching later um, thinks, oh, I want to check that out. Go on social media and think, can I picture myself on campus being a part of this event or activity that was mentioned, but also all the others that you'll um, stumble upon as you research more. Um, all right, well, I'm gonna throw out one more um, Q&A question to our uh, panelists. You didn't quite preppy for this one, but you're pros, so I know you're gonna get it. Um, well, making sure we've got, um, so we had a couple questions in the Q&A and getting that information out in the chat. Um, also, I just wanted to let everyone know who's watching that unfortunately, um, Today, we also were supposed to be hearing from Benedict College and Winthrop University, and they uh, let us know that they were unable to make it today and very much regret that. So we hope that you will go to their websites, check them out, check out all their information to learn more because they are also two great schools in addition to the four awesome programs that we learned about today. All right, so admissions pros, here we go. Um, what is the tip or piece of advice that you would give to students going through um, the college search process? You know, we have two schools from Hawaii, couple of school, two schools from South Carolina. We're in the time of COVID. So what are some of those best tips that you can give to help students and families navigate all of this? And we'll go in that same order. So Susie, thanks again for starting. Thanks. So um, as a mom of a current senior in high school who is, who you know, just went through the process, start early. Uh, do not wait for your essay uh, the day before the application deadline. Um, start working on it now in the summer. And one of the most important points is before your uh, uh, high school semester ends, make sure you're reaching out to your teachers. And it could be that you have to reach out maybe to your freshman or sophomore teacher who know, knows you better. Um, to let them know if they can write you a letter of recommendation to get their email and to get that all set up so that you're not scrambling right before the deadline like my son was. <laughs> he didn't listen to my advice. <laughs> there, this question is so hard because there's so much advice I have to give. Um, hopefully I can limit it to two. One would be to trust the process. Like I know it can be very stressful and overwhelming and there's like a billion colleges and oh my God, what am I gonna do? Where am I gonna go? But just like do your research, like take a deep breath, calm down. The right one will find you or you will find the right one. Um, so it's gonna work out. Like I wanna assure you it's gonna work out. And then the second one I have is to visit campus if you can. I know it can be tough right now, but if you can visit campuses in person, I would do that so that you can get like some kind of feeling like you're going to either like it or not like it or feel right or not feel right. And so that'll happen right as you step on campus. So that's my advice. If I could sum it down uh, into two words, be proactive. Um, this year has been crazy. <laughs> uh, like it's just been crazy 2021 it was definitely the class that was affected most by COVID and they had to be the most proactive in actually going out because colleges really couldn't go to fairs anymore and so everything was virtual and proactive kind of had to you know students had to be proactive so be proactive um, and then second definitely go through um, the the process of different universities like go go and visit um, we at Anderson have uh, campus visits right now in person so definitely come check us out check different universities out visit a multi multitude and then start kind of narrowing it down um, and then some campuses have overnight visits um, all access visits is what we call them here at AU go to those um, that's probably one of the best ways to really get a sense of what it's going to be like to be a student um, and then during your college search, you will feel a sense of peace about where you need to be um, that and, and go. And, and, that, and that's kind of it. Um, so just make sure you're getting through your deadlines. Um, try to have a completed application by middle of August, um, October, November, like early fall um, before scholarship season hits. Um, and so uh, there, there's a lot of different pieces of advice, but definitely be proactive. Um, one thing I'd like to add is uh, definitely do your homework on uh, the different scholarship opportunities um, that you can receive. So I know a lot of people always talk about all these uh, scholarships that students don't claim and that, um, and so just definitely do your homework on that because you may be able to reduce, you know, your final bill by a significant margin um, just by applying to the right scholarships. 
So uh, definitely look at what's available to you and uh, don't hesitate to apply for them. I know Kimiko is right. You know, there's so much more advice and tips that all of these admissions representatives and all their colleagues could share with you. But I think the big takeaway um, from these fabulous tips too, though, is that these are your number one resources. All of these admission counselors and their colleagues love answering questions, love helping you connect with what you're looking for in and out of the classroom, or if you're not sure how to explore the range of options that are there. So don't, my tip is always to build that relationship don't be afraid to ask questions to explore because you might find a school that you hadn't thought of before might end up being that right place. Or you figure out that school that you've always known about has something that really does connect with you and maybe, maybe you didn't expect. So there are so many options that are out there and they're all amazing and you can find the right place for you, the fit for you. Um, but the admissions counselors are your ally, your resource, your guide um, to really help you through the process. So please reach out and follow through. All right, well, we are coming to the end of our time together with these four awesome schools. I hope that everyone learned a little bit more today and is excited to, um, after this like six minute sneak peek, dig in, research and explore more. Thank you to these admissions representatives. All of you are amazing, not just the facts and the figures of your schools that you're sharing, but just that passion for the student experience in and out of the classroom and just bringing that to life today. Thank you to everyone for taking time out of their day to be here. Um, we really appreciate that as well. All right, so when you close your window, there's gonna be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. It's four questions, it's really quick. So thanks for taking that time. This is again, just one of many sessions that have been hosted as part of the programming for the Small School Districts Association's Virtual College Fair. We hope you enjoyed this presentation and others. But remember, you can find all of the session recordings at that same website where you register, strivescan.com slash SSDA. In about a week's time, you'll be able to access that all to learn about great schools or to share this one with, with friends and family. So thank you again, everyone, for taking your time out today. Best wishes in your college search and decision journey. It's a big process, yes, but it should be a lot of fun along the way. So thanks again and have a great day. Bye.